Welcome to my designer class. My name is Mercy and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. In today's tutorial I'm going to show how I made this modified Z card. I got this um, layout and idea from Jan B, but I'm using a completely different stamp set and had a few tips and tips with um, how to make this without getting too confused. And my biggest secret is templates. <laughs> That is definitely the answer for me. I don't know about you, but I think they really help. So to start off with, I'm, this is the base template and I broke it down in two steps for the base. So you can see um, I line it up at one and a half. I'm just gonna bring in my um, Stampin' Trimmer. So when I say one and a half, I mean, I am going to line this up at one and a half to, um, start, oh, I mean one and an eighth, <laughs> excuse me, I was seeing that was off actually. And then I start at one and a half, cutting to six and seven eighths. So um, that's what I mean by these templates are really helpful that way. And then I have a second template and this is step two. And this is where I show where to score and where um, to, um, where things, you know, just are, positioned. So anyway, without um, going on further, I will go ahead, bring in the stamp and trimmer and we will do this step together. So um, bringing in my base here, I'm going to line this up at one and an eighth. So I'm just going to go over here and line it up. Oh, one and eighth is right there. Okay. And then I'm going to start cutting. I'm going to bring this over here at one and a half. So I got one and an eight there. Just want to make sure I got it perfectly. And then I'm going to start at one and an eighth and I'm, I'm one and a half, I'm sorry, and go down to um, six and seven eighths. So that's way down here. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. And then I'm just going to turn it around um, and do it, but you could do it on the other side as well. All right, actually, maybe I'll, it will show how you can do it on the other side, not even turn the page. So here we go, one and an eighth inches, and I start at one and a half, drop my blade. Yeah. And I go down to six and seven eighths. So there we have it. And that's all for the cutting for this part. So you have two flaps essentially. So the next part is going to be the scoring. So I just push my blade all the way down and I'm going to bring this back in and show this. So here I'm going to um, be scoring above the cut line and below. And then I'm going to be scoring here and here and here and here. <laughs> So a lot of scoring. <laughs> All right, so, but I don't want anyone to be confused. So here I'm going to um, line it up at four and an eighth. So when I say four and an eighth, I mean over here, and this will kind of be the halfway point. And I'm going to score above and below that um, cut line. So if you get a tiny bit in, that's okay. And then I'm going to line up at six and an eighth. So I'm going to slide this down and go six and an eighth. And we're going to score again above and below the cut line. So right there. I hope this makes it a little simpler. These templates, it really helps me stay on track because it is kind of confusing. It's just, it just simply is. So the um, next step is we're going to score these lines right here. So I'm going to bring, turn this around and I'm going to now, um, let's see how I did that. Yeah. Okay. One and a half and two and a half. So I'm going to line it up at one and a half. And this is the part where we're scoring inside the, um, well, not inside, but in the, between the cut lines. So at one and a half, do I have it one and a half? Yes, I do. And we're going to start and score down. I just want to make sure I 
feel like it's a little bit off, but I'm not sure. Yeah, no, it's fine. Okay, so one and a half and then two and a half. Okay, two and a half. There, and then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to score on this side. Again, the um, one and a half and two and a half. Okay, sorry, I'm kind of taking too much time here, probably. You're going to get bored here, <laughs> but I don't want to screw this up. <laughs> and this, again, these are the um, inside the cut lines. So there we go. All right. Okay, so when you're done, it will look like this. I don't know if you can see that those score lines pretty well. Um, I will temporarily set it aside now and we will start the next layer, which is the matte layer. Okay, so I'm going to bring back in this and this is step three. We're going to be cutting here and here and we're gonna line up at one, and a, one inch. So I'm gonna put my score and I'm gonna bring in my white card stock. So we're gonna line it up at one inch and then I've already actually cut this part. So you start at one and three eighths and you go down to six and a half. So right there and there. So that part we already did, <laughs> just to speed things up a little. And then I'm going to show how you cut this out. Now we wanna line this up at one and three eighths. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna line that up at one and three eighths. And we're going to actually cut and we're gonna start at one inch so I have, I just dropped my blade one inch and I cut down to, and I kind of, it's kind of hard to see right on this part. So I will actually just use my snips to finish it off. If you do get it a little bit off, it's okay. Okay, so again, one and three eighths, I start cutting at one inch and I go to four and five eighths. So four and five eighths. <clears throat> All right, so you can see how that one I did a little better, but it's not that difficult to just quickly use your snips if you're a little short. It's better to be a little short and use your snips than too much. So this we can use for stamping or whatever else we want. So this is now the piece we have. The next step is to cut it. So I will bring back in the trimmer, the stamp and trimmer. The stamp and trimmer really does make it easier. So we're gonna just line it up at four inches and cut it off. Ooh. There we go. Set this piece aside. Now we're going to um, turn it around on this piece and we're going to be cutting again. And this time we're cutting it about two inches. I liked it just shy of two inches, so a sixteenth of an inch less. So we're just going to cut this off and we will be using these as well. So don't throw those out. They'll definitely be used. <laughs> All right, so I will temporarily set this aside and I'll bring in the DSP layer and talk about that a little bit. So here is my DSP layer and this I just went ahead and put on completely on a um, one sheet. So this one, I lined it up at um, seven eighths. Okay, so seven eighths, cut this way. Then I turned it, lined this up at one and a fourth, cut it, and I cut it, this whole thing out. I hope that makes sense. And then the next part is to cut it down as well to mat, oh well, actually layer with the other. So here's my piece and I have to just um, completely free it and this um, if you're this is tranquil textures the DSP and I think it it's a very subtle um, pattern which I kind of liked for this I wanted the little critters to be the focal part I'm just trying to free this up a little okay so here it's cut out <laughs> ta-da very quickly and again I'm going to be cutting it out um, here so uh, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to line this one up at three and seven eighths. So three and seven eighths B 
because the other one we had cut at four inches so we want it to mat so I'm gonna cut this and you have to be a little bit gentle with the DSP because it is okay we're gonna set that one aside and we're going to now cut down this one and so we're going to be a little shy here again of we're gonna be two a uh, one in um, about one in seven eighths okay so I think I just want to double check on my thing yeah where I cut okay so we're just gonna cut that lop that off and again we will use these pieces so we want to be careful not to throw those out or lose them all right so um, I think we're done with the trimmer for now I will bring back in some of my pieces so we're just ready to roll and we get going assembling this so um, all right I've got to find my oh yeah here are all my matting pieces and then here is my DSP pieces so at this point you can go ahead start layering it up um, we will fold after we put the layers on it'll just make it a little easier to do so I like using Tombow glue it just goes on quickly and I can make a few adjustments if I need to and this part I won't focus too much on I'll just try to do this quickly um, this card is a lot of fun but it's very intensive you're not gonna pump out about 20 of these in an afternoon so it would be one of those special cards if you will and this should mat here yeah okay I kind of <clears throat> I think I kind of have my dimensions slightly off on this part but it'll still work it's close enough and well I'm going to finish this part so I could have actually done this a little bit longer so it probably should have been bit two inches instead of cutting off that 16th it should have been more like actually two in the 16th extra so if you want to make a note of that <laughs> but overall it will it'll work out just fine and once you have it opened up no one will really notice this is okay so that is how the matting looks and next I'm going to put on the DSP okay oh <laughs> Because see, this is where you know if you want to adjust it, it, it really helps to just have the liquid glue. If you made a little bit of an error, you can make some fine tune tune adjustments. Now, because I kind of messed up here a little bit, I'm modifying and bringing it over to that side because that will be what's more visible. So that's. I like the white matting usually I think of matting as like dark colored but this is actually pretty cool especially because this DSP has some light in it I think it looks really neat all right so the next part will be folding the card and that's very simple <laughs> but um, I do like again referring to my template okay so here we go so that's how um, so I will bring back in my template and here I show mountain valley mountain valley mountain valley mountain valley now I will go ahead and um, I'm not sure where uh, oh I guess I'll start with this okay so we're gonna do a mountain here so I'm just gonna bring this in and try not to and bend and then a valley will be here so I will go ahead and do that and I will at the end use my bone folder to really 
um, get it more crisp. Okay, so, but for now I'm just going to use my fingers. And then this is Valley. Hopefully I got this right. <laughs> if I didn't, I apologize. All right, so mountain here, mountain here, valley here. So, all right, so yeah, I think I did. We will get, bring in the bone folder now and just really try to make this more crisp and get it. And it, again, it is a little bit forgiving. So if you kind of mess up a little bit, don't worry. You know, it, this is part of um, crafting, which is, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Just almost perfect would be nice, but you know. <laughs> All right, so I have, um, the next step is to go ahead and decorate. And I have already run this through the embossing folder. And you can, this is the subtle dynamic, and this is the foil um, paper. So I ran it through and it really makes, it picks up this light, it's really cool. If you, you can't really see it probably on camera as much, but I think it's really cool. And then I lined it with Lemon Lime Twist. And I will go ahead and adhere this. So you can re-flatten your card just so that you can do this a little easier at this point. And this, I'm sorry if my head's in there, but it helps to just like put it down really nicely and so forth. So um, I did go ahead and color everything. So I, the main thing I wanted to show was just how I um, did the Z fold and with the uh, templates and how it made it a little bit simpler. So I'm just gonna go ahead, and put this in. You're my chosen family. This stamp set is from um, part of my story. And I thought it was really cute because we have all these critters and it looks like a family. I know that's a little bit corny, but I like corny sometimes. All right, so with the glue dot, I'm going to go ahead and attach my ribbon. And this is the um, celebration ribbon that is actually not orderable right now. It's so sad. But they are going to get it back, I understand, in March. So we're just going to put that there and um, we will start decorating the rest of it. Put, bring in our critters. We got to have the critters. Okay, so here is my um, big old ape. We'll go ahead and put him up here. Some of these you could change up if you use these animals, but others you couldn't really. So one thing you do want to make sure is you don't put it in the corner which I'm always seeming to forget, but that time I was actually pretty good <laughs> in spite of myself. All right, so set him there. Um, this is one that you really couldn't put just anywhere. For example, here, it would go on here, you know. So this is really the only place that he would really work. So right, we're gonna go ahead and put our gator in. And he's just adorable. This is probably what, I think, this one's my favorite of all the little critters from the, um, what is this set called again? Hey Love. See all the critters? And we're gonna use pretty, I think every single critter, <laughs> which is really cool. All right, now we're gonna bring in our skunk and he's gonna go up here. And you could make this a Valentine's Day card or you could just um, make it a sort of a thinking of you card or, you could convert this into a baby card. I think that would be adorable if you wanted a really special card. Um, just, there are a lot of possibilities. This one's really cute too, the little otter. I think he's adorable. And I did color these with the blends, which I could show you. I will bring it in. Okay, see all the blends I used? Not to scare you, but I used a number of them. There's so much fun. All right, so this is the only one that's not from the Hey Love. This is from the celebration set, So Hoppy, for you. It comes from there. I just wanted to point that one out that that is not part of the set, but I thought it, he was really cute, and why not and put him in too? So the more the merrier, right? At least that's what I was going for, the look. The more the merrier look. Okay, so here we go. And then, um, okay, what other, oh, the little, this little fella. 
He's a, like a pygmy or something. Or a, no, a, what a hamster. That's what I was trying to think. Okay, so I think I got them all. Oh. And the last thing I'm going to do is go ahead and stamp the Valentine greeting. So I'm going to bring in my um, Native Navy. I hope you found this uh, tutorial helpful and may thought maybe you could try one of these cards if you've never have a Z-fold type. It's not as complicated as I feared. Once you kind of create a pattern, it's not that bad. So I'm using Knight of Navy here to stamp Hey, hey Valentine. And I think that's a nice little touch at the end. Now, the last thing I do want to do is show you how you can still write on here. So I'm going to bring in this little piece of cardstock here, and I have cut it. And I will stamp it with the little birdie. I think this one's a nice one to just put it in the corner. So he looks adorable. Okay, and go ahead, put this on. Um, if you've found this tutorial helpful, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I produce a lot of videos. I try to do at least one a week. And um, if you would like to place an order, please use the host code. And I'm going to bring that back in. Um, if you need any help with ordering, please email me at mewants3 at gmail.com and I'd be happy to assist you. So I hope you enjoyed watching this and we'll give this a shot. So here is, you are my chosen family. I will go ahead and bring back in the other one and you can see that. I also wanted to talk about one quick tip is with these new cling stamps, um, some people are having trouble getting them off and this take your pick tool with the spatula can really help you with that. So you just get under, make sure you get under the um, clear part, the sticker part, and then you just pull it up. So it comes off really easily that way, but the spatula end, I really like using. You can use your nails, but sometimes my nails aren't that good, and this is definitely kind of like a foolproof way. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and um, please subscribe. Happy stamping.